In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Sunday, the twenty eighth of January, twenty twenty four. Fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time and the Word of God for today is very challenging. It is challenging us to prophetic ministry. We are called to be prophets. What kind of a prophet are you? Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following deliberate members. Colin James celebrating his 60th birthday today from Johannesburg, South Africa. Text for us the first reading. Msul Felicia Sunday from Oweri, Nigeria. Text for us the responsorial psalm. Grace C. Bandamwale from Lusaka, Zambia. Text for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Deacon Benedict K. Nyondo, a permanent deacon from Karonga Diocese in Malawi as he celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, I will raise up a prophet and I will put my words in his mouth. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 15 to 20. Moses spoke to the people saying, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. From your brethren, him you shall heed, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They have rightly said all that they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from amongst their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I have commanded him. And whoever will not give heed to my word, which ye shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 95, verse 1 to 2, verse 6 to 7, A, B, C, verse 7, D to 9. And the response is taken from Psalm 95, verse 7, D, and 8, A. And the response is, all that today you would listen to his voice, had they not your hearts? Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, had not your hearts. Come, let us ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come into his presence, giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. 
Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we, the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, had it not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your forebearers put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, had not your hearts. The second reading. The virgin is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to be holy. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 32 to 35. Brethren, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly affairs, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried woman or virgin is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about the worldly affairs, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Matthew 4 verse 16. Hallelujah. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 1, verses 21b to 28. In the city of Capernaum, on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent, and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, conversing him, and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching. With authority he commands even the unclean spirit, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Law. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Three times in the passage we have today in our first reading, the word prophet has been used to just tell us in these five verses that the word of God today is about being a prophet. Moses is about to conclude his prophetic ministry. It is Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy is the last book of the Pentateuch. The first five books referred to as the books of Moses, that is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Now, in the last book, we hear the testament given by Moses. Moses was a great leader. 
Moses didn't want the people to cling to him. No, he reminded them that, listen, even after I have gone, there will be somebody like me. And this should be in the minds of people that though in reality, in the ontological nature of a human being, nobody will be like you. But when it comes to ministry, God will always raise up somebody like us who will do this work, who will make sure that the prophetic aspect of the church is maintained. What does it mean to be a prophet? To be a prophet does not just mean telling people about football and who is going to win and who is going to lose. No, it is not about foretelling. That is similar to what witch doctors do. You don't call me a prophet because I have told you that tomorrow you are going to have malaria and so you say I'm a prophet. No, I am a prophet because I'm telling you the truth. I'm a prophet because I'm pointing out to you what has to be. That is what it means to be a prophet. To be a prophet is to be bold enough to tell the people that they are not doing things right. To be a prophet is to be bold enough to tell the people that they are on the right path. That is what a prophet is expected to do and it requires a lot of humility to do that. If you are a proud woman, you will never be a prophetess. Why? Because there is a lot of hatred involved in being a prophet. I am telling you, not too many people are going to like you because you are telling them the truth. Moses says, your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves. Where will this prophet come from? He will not drop from heaven. No, he will be taken from among the people. Why? Because he knows what is on the ground. He knows what the people go through. And he will be in a position to tell them how they must live their lives. That is why even our priesthood takes up a prophetic aspect when we mingle with people, when we go into the lives of people and understand how they live their lives. I like traveling on the buses. I like traveling on trains because from there I discover a lot of things that make me preach a concrete word when I am dealing with the people and I tell them how things ought to be. I like reading a lot because in reading I discover what is going on in the world. I like being on social media platforms because there I am able to interact and know what is going on in the world of the people I'm supposed to minister to and then I am able to tell them this is the way, this is not the way. So listen. You are not being unchristian when you find yourself on Twitter, but let your presence be prophetic. Make sure you proclaim God there. Make sure you show your authority as a believer there. Moses continues telling the people, I will raise up a prophet like yourself for them from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth and he shall tell them all I command him and he will tell them with a lot of authority. He goes on to say, but the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say or who speaks in the name of other gods, the prophet shall die. This is a very tough word here. Yeah? That my preaching, the word we give to people should be based on scripture, should be based on the word of God. That is what God has said in his word. I shouldn't be putting things that God has not commanded me to say. That's why many things are disputed in our word, in our preaching, because we seem to be saying things that God has not said. 
we seem to be encouraging things that God has not said. God has not said we should be marrying a man and a man. God has not said a woman and a woman should be getting married. And if I encourage that and I tell people it is okay, I can bless a man and a man, a woman and a woman, I am not being prophetic enough. I want to say this. I want to tell our believers that we are not here for political correctness. I'm not here to gain a name in the political sphere so that I get money. No, I am here to proclaim with authority the authority that I get from the word. Not my own authority. Not my own power. No. But the authority that I get from what God commands me to tell the people. This is not right. I am not there to tell people that it is right to marry five wives or to marry five husbands. Because I know I have a friend who has five husbands. And so I am getting help from that friend. I am not prophetic enough if I continue encouraging that person to live a life like that. That is corruption. And we have so many of our believers who are prone to corruption because they cannot maintain their prophetic voice. You know, when you were baptized, you became a prophet, a prophetess, a king and a queen and a priest by that anointing. The chrism oil was only used for these three kinds of people. The prophets, the kings and the priests. And by baptism, you have received that anointing. You have received the chrism oil that makes you a prophet to speak the truth when it has to be spoken, to make sure that you guide the people on the path of the gospel, on the path of the word of God, to make sure that you are a priest, somebody of sacrifice, somebody who lives a life of sacrifice, not of selfishness, to make sure that you are a king, somebody who leads by example, who is able to guide people into the path of righteousness. That is what you are meant to be. And Jesus shows that the promise made by Moses in the first reading of today is fulfilled in him. I will raise up a prophet like myself. Jesus is the new Moses who comes now with this prophetic voice where he has that moral authority. That moral voice that when he speaks, everybody listens to him. And everybody bows. Even demons listen to him. Wow. And you know what? The demons are found in the temple of God, in the house of God, in the synagogue. And it is from that synagogue that Jesus wants us to start casting out the demons prophetically. To speak from the house of God with a prophetic voice that casts out all demons. We have so many demons today. We have demons of partiality. We have demons of corruption. We have demons of homosexuality. We have demons of promiscuity. We have demons of all kinds. And we have to talk about these demons and say with authority, come out of these believers. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Sunday to you. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I.
sincere as the air I breathe. 